Hey guys, today we are going to be making two loaves of organic whole wheat bread. Just so you know, um, this recipe comes from Peter Reinhardt's book on making bread. So on day one, you want to start off with four bowls. The first one has 454 grams of whole wheat flour with one teaspoon of salt. The second one has another 454 grams of wheat flour. The third one will have 296 grams of scalded milk. And the fourth one will have 340 grams of water along with half a teaspoon of active dry yeast. If you want to go 100% from scratch, check out our video on milling wheat. Um, otherwise, you could always just buy the flour. So mix up the flour and salt in bowl one and then pour in the milk to form a ball of dough. You don't actually want to knead the dough at this stage, you just really want to form this um, nice ball of dough and it's really okay if it's a little bit dry or if it's a little bit sticky, that's fine. Um, just bring it all together um, in a nice firm ball. Now you want to put this dough in a, some kind of container with a lid and let it sit in the fridge for about 8 to 10 hours. Keeping the dough in the fridge will result in softer and tastier bread. Take the other bowl of flour and add the water and yeast mixture to that flour. Um, make sure you don't leave behind any of the yeast settled at the bottom of the bowl and you sort of like swirl it around and pour it in. Um, and you want to do the same thing as before, make this mixture into a nice ball of dough. Just like the first ball of dough, you also want to keep this ball of dough in a container um, in the fridge for 8 to 10 hours. Congratulations, we have made it to day 2. And the first thing you're going to want to do is take out the two balls of dough from the fridge and let them come to room temperature for about 3 or 4 hours. This is a very important step you do not want to forget. And then you're going to want to put our usual whole wheat flour, um, 113 grams of it, into a stand mixer. And then you're going to take both balls of dough and then put them into the mixer by breaking them into small pieces. Now add in two tablespoons of olive oil two teaspoons of salt, and two tablespoons of honey. Next, you need to add in active dry yeast, which you need to activate um, by taking two teaspoons of yeast and putting it in two tablespoons of warm water along with a pinch of sugar. And you'll know when the yeast is activated when it starts bubbling and foaming. And this will make sure your bread dough is fermented and that you'll get um, good, good bread. Finally, we can start kneading the dough. And we're going to be putting the stand mixer on the medium high speed for five minutes. And it's really important in the beginning that you make sure all the ingredients are mixed together properly.
Once you have confirmed that the ingredients are mixed together, turn up the speed to high and knead for five more minutes. If the dough seems dry, you may want to add in just a little bit of water. We're adding in a tablespoon at a time, so you want to make sure you don't add in too much water because then it may become too wet. After you have finished uh, kneading the dough for 5 minutes, turn off the mixer and let the dough sit for another 5 minutes. This will allow the gluten in the dough to really develop. After the 5 minute rest is over, Turn the stand mixer on to medium high speed and knead for another 3 minutes to strengthen the gluten fibers. To test whether or not the gluten has developed in the dough, take a small ball of dough and stretch it out gently. And if the dough forms a nice thin translucent film, then you know the gluten fibers have properly developed. However, if it falls apart, then you know you need to keep kneading for about another minute. Another way to check if you're done kneading is if you were to push on the dough, it would bounce back and it would be soft but not sticky and that is a sign that you can move on to the next step. Transfer your dough to a bowl and then shape it into a nice ball, coating it with olive oil. Then you want to cover it with a flour cloth and let it rise until it's one and a half times its original size. Um, and this could be from 45 to 60 minutes. As you can see, the dough has risen to about two times its original size and now we're gonna um, shape it into two loaves. Punch down the dough and roll it into a nice ball. Then divide it into two equal parts and shape those two loaves on a surface that has um, flour on it so that way the dough does not stick to the surface.
then you can put those two loaves in two loaf pans which you have coated in oil um, so that once again those loaves don't stick to the pans. So just as before, we're gonna let these two loaves rise for about 45 minutes until they're one and a half times their original size. As you can see, the two loaves have risen to about 1.5 times their original size, and now we're gonna bake them in the oven, which has been preheated to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, and after you put them in the oven, you're going to lower the temperature to 350 degrees Fahrenheit and let them bake for an hour. We finally have our baked loaves of 100% whole wheat bread. And what you're gonna do is let them cool in the pan for about five to 10 minutes, and then you can turn the pans upside down and transfer those loaves to a cooling rack. Um, after this, you're gonna let them cool on the cooling rack for another 10 to 12 hours, and then you can slice them. Notice the hollow sound we hear when we tap the bread, and this is a sound that indicates the bread is perfectly baked, and that's what you want to hear when you're done baking your bread. The smell of this freshly baked whole wheat bread is just amazing and um, as you can see the crust on the outside is crispy yet the inside is nice and soft and now that you have this perfectly baked 100% whole wheat bread the opportunities are really endless. Um, this bread could be used for, you know, a classic peanut butter and jelly, to a grilled cheese, to any sandwich of your own invention, and it tastes amazing, and it's super healthy. It has no all-purpose flour whatsoever, um, which a lot of other whole wheat breads, you know, they do have them. They, they aren't 100% whole wheat like this one, and um, this is really the healthiest a bread can get.